Don't allow what anybody out there tells you is possible or not possible for you. Welcome to the Jay and Joe show. This is episode number six, and we have Amari from Paris, France. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. That's cool. <laughs> Now, Amari, you're a, you're a younger guy. You're 20 years old, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. I was born in uh, 2000. Wow. So, it's crazy, yeah. man. So you're just a baby. Yeah. And just, really and just to make it clear for the audience, uh, you are 20 years old, but you're already IFBB pro. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's at the crazy, same show man. you did in, uh, in Alicante, yeah. We did the wow. same show. We did the same show, but you were you were in uh, light heavyweight, right? Yeah, I did um, junior uh, Saturday, and on um, on uh, on Sunday I did uh, light heavyweight. Yeah, so that's uh, under 90 kilograms. Yeah. Wow. So you just uh, you just won your pro card this year, then? Yeah, like um, a month and a half ago. Uh, so it was uh, I did second. Uh, second idea of the role next to uh, the, the guy that won the whole show was Pablo, the Span Spanish guy, was crazy big. But uh, yeah, so I won uh, juniors and I won a light TV white. So I, I went to the other role and, uh, and I got the pro card. So that, that was crazy. Yeah. Oh, congrats, man. That's impressive. Yeah. Thank you. Especially being 20 years old. Uh, that's really impressive. Yeah. Uh, how many How many times have you competed before... You won your pro card. Um, I've been competed uh, a few times uh, in 2018, 2019, then 2020. Uh, I didn't because of COVID, and so that was my third uh, season uh, for wow. the pro card. Yeah. So I did like uh, maybe a, a bit less than a 10 show total. Yeah. That's really impressive, man. To be able to do that in a few years, like yeah. that shows. Uh, That shows that you must you have some good potential there because to be able to win it at such a young age and at an international level show, man, that's that's nothing to add an eyelash at. That's very impressive. So um, I don't know if Jay Jay would you be able to pull up his uh, profile? Yeah, of course. So we can share it because Jay's better at that stuff than me, so he's able to share it and yeah, we can see life. we can kind of see what your Instagram and uh, and that kind of pictures on there from the show. Mm. Yeah, there's many of them because there was many uh, uh, pro uh, photographs. So the pictures are, are great. Yeah. Yeah. So, How many pro cards uh, did they give out for bodybuilding at that show? Uh, it's three. Okay. Oh, it's uh, Joe, three. Just, like, just, a uh, minute, just a minute, guys. Um, you have to activate that I can uh, oh, show. Yes. Uh, where do I do that? Does it work now? Wait. Yes. Now it works. Perfect. So this is your profile. Yeah, that's it. 20 years old, world youngest IFBB pro. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. Cool. You you informed yourself because you posted, I think, two or three weeks post competition. You posted something about Cody Montgomery. Yeah, because because um, you had to look if he's the youngest or you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's younger guys that uh, went pro, but it's uh, in men's physique or girls in bikini. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's not as hard as bodybuilding. So staying in, in the bodybuilding spectrum, uh, I, I'm the youngest, I think. Uh, Cody Montgomery was the guy who was the, the record until then. You look really good there, man. Like, you have a really good shape. Small waist, conditioning is good, shape is good. Really yeah. good bag. Yeah. yeah. You only need to work more on your adductors hmm? to fill in the gap. Yeah. But the rest is insane. Good vacuum. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, thank that's, you. that's very good development for 20 years old. Like you have very good shape and structure and you can only improve from there. That's for sure. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Oh, definitely, man. Um, so that's your group. What do you uh, what do you have in mind for your pro debut? Um, I was thinking about doing uh, 212 
but um, I saw um, last, last week I was at uh, Mr. Olympia Portugal and I saw the two, two 12 guys pro and they are just too big. So I think I'm going to go in classic maybe next year or in okay. two years. Yeah. What is your uh, weight limit for classic as a pro? Yeah. For, for as a start, yeah, I think. No, no, yeah, what's your weight limit now? As for a me, pro? it's uh, for my height, it's uh, 98 kilograms, I think. 98, okay, yeah, okay. So, so that's it's, 12. so it's almost the, it's a little bit heavier than uh, than light heavyweights, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was at uh, 87 kilograms when I was uh, on stage, so okay, so you a, can you can put on a couple of kgs of muscle. Yeah, absolutely. So that's cool. Yeah. This is your coach? Yeah, that's my coach. Banco? Yeah. He's, um, he's from a uh, uh, Western uh, country and he, he's really been coaching me very well for like four years now. Okay. Since 2018. So since I'm okay. crazy. Yeah. So he's, he's been coaching you the whole time you've been competing? Yeah, for yeah. four years now. Yeah. This was really at the beginning. Uh, on the... Um, on the left, I'm 14, and on the right, I'm uh, 19. That was last year. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Impressive. Really good, man. That's very impressive, man. But that's, uh, I think that's like a smart move for you, because if you, if you move into classic physique, then it just gives you a chance to kind of get your feet wet, and you can see if you like classic better, or if you want to continue to grow into the 212s, you know? So... For someone like you, it's like you have the options right now where it's like you could go into a different category or, you know, keep uh, keep trying to grow as well. But like with your shape, you can definitely jump right into classic. I could see that for sure. Yes, that, that was um, I was thinking about. But the, the problem is in classic, you have only like uh, four poses plus the classic poses. So I don't really I'm not a big fan of that, if, yeah. even though I like the division. Uh, so that that's why I first uh, wanted to go uh, in uh, 212. Uh, but uh, seeing the the mass of the guys, I think it's better to start off with classic. Uh, yeah, it's true. Like I, I I honestly I don't understand why classic doesn't do the same poses as a bodybuilder, because in my opinion I think they should be the same because it's classic bodybuilding. It's still bodybuilding. I, I don't understand the logic behind them not doing some of the mandatories that bodybuilders do, but I would like to see them add them into classic because I think it would make it more interesting to see them do all the poses mm. uh, like they did back in, uh, you know, like in the seventies in the golden era with Arnold and all those guys, like they were doing the, they were doing all the poses. So I feel like they should bring it into the, the classic physique division now, in my opinion, anyways. Yeah. I, I, I don't really know what the way they do that. Uh, I think uh, maybe it's to be a bit uh, different than bodybuilding, but um, I don't really see the point. Uh, you have so much you can show uh, in your physique more than, uh, I don't know, uh, these four or five poses, uh, especially with uh, the classic poses. I don't know if they really, um, you know, uh, if they really can uh, see who's better than who, because if some guys do some pose on the ground and over from the back, I don't know how we can tell who's better. So that's left us with four poses. And that's not a lot. Yeah. Well, especially with the, with the favorite classic pose, everyone is doing another one. And then you can't really see who is better than the other, like you see in the most muscular. But in bodybuilding, we do most muscular. Um, everybody does another most muscular yeah, some some guys are bending over some guys do wrist on wrist and things like that mm -hmm. so i don't understand either why but look at men's physique they are completely yeah. different so they have only four mandatories so just oh, like quarter turns quarter turns yeah and that's it and i think classic physique is is a mix of of bodybuilding and men's physique so you have less poses than bodybuilding, but more than men's physique, maybe like that to maybe to save time because you have more competitors on classic physique. If they should do every poses like uh, the open guys or the 212, then you would have more time on stage and it would last longer. Yeah, maybe that's, that's the reason. True. It does make sense when you when you put it like that, Jay, it kind of does make sense. It is kind of, I guess, in between physique and bodybuilding. But I still think it'd be great to see them do all the poses. But that's just me. 
because I am more of a fan of bodybuilding at the end of the day. So I like seeing the different poses, especially on a guy that's classic because like they have such a great shape that I feel like those poses do their physique justice because you'll even see guys like, uh, you know, like Chris Bumstead because like, you know, he's, uh, I don't know if you know this, Omari, like I I don't think we followed each other before this, but uh, like, you know who Chris Bumstead is, I'm assuming? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Well, anyways, like yeah, he trains at the same, he, he lives in the same city as me and we train at the same gyms. Uh, so I see him all the time and it's like, I've seen him hitting like the bodybuilding poses outside of just the classic poses and he looks good in them. So even like, you know, for someone like him, it'd be interesting to see uh, the guys at the Olympia level doing those other mandatory poses in bodybuilding just to, you know, just to make it more interesting, you know, it makes it a little more, I think it'd be cool to see, but they probably won't do it anytime soon, but I think it'd be a cool thing to see happen in the near future. Yeah. And uh, Chris uh, started with uh, bodybuilding when he yeah. was in his pro card. So, yeah. He was, yeah. Uh, he did the same thing as you. He won his pro card in bodybuilding and then switched to classic. So you could be following in some footsteps there. Maybe. He maybe. Was, uh, I think he was 21. He was 21, yeah. I think, when he won. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're even younger than him, which is impressive because... He's a, yeah, but he was really, his physique was uh, very, very developed. I think he was bigger than me. Um, maybe, yeah, a little bit, yeah, because he's taller too. Like, how tall are you? Yep. Uh, I'm uh, 175 centimeters. I don't know how many, how much is it in uh, feet? I think that's five foot, five foot eight. Yeah, some, something like that. Okay, yeah, because Chris is about, he's taller. He, he's about six one or six two. I think he's six that's, one. He is really tall, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty. He's taller than me because I'm about five ten, so he's a bit taller than me. Um, but yeah, he's uh, as I know in his off season, he's like about 260, 260 pounds. So yeah. he's pretty heavy in the off season. Then he has to get down to like two thirty five or whatever it is to to compete on stage. So it's uh, yeah. you have to you stay within that weight cap, but you can keep improving your physique because even me seeing, you know, a guy like him over the past couple of years since he's been at the the top of the game, like he's progressed his physique while staying within that weight cap. So even a guy like yourself, like I'm sure that you might have that weight cap to deal with, but you're going to be able to develop your physique even better with, you know, better maturity, conditioning, shape, everything. So it'll be uh, interesting to see like how that happens for you in the next year or two. Yeah, of course. Especially the the biggest thing is you have so much time left, so Mm -hmm. much time because you're only 20 getting 21 and your next competition should be on a pro stage with 21, 22. Not many yeah. guys can can do things like that. The most get their pro card with 25. And then they, they think already, oh, I have only five years until I get 30. So you have 10 years left. Mm. Oh, that's crazy, yeah. man. That's uh, crazy. I think um, that's an opportunity for me to take my time also, yeah. So um, that's why I, I was thinking about uh, starting next year like towards uh, October or November, you know, really toward the end of the year. But um, maybe in classic, if not, it will be uh, in two years, maybe. Because I don't really want to rush it, uh, you know, the entire prep, the money, etc. Uh, if, you, if you're not at the level, it doesn't matter. You, you, won't, be, you won't be rewarded. So uh i really want to take my time maybe sing with my coach if we are ready or not for next year and if not it will be 2023 i think yeah that's yeah. smart because you're you can take the time to grow into 212 or you could jump into classic a bit sooner but it's all about feeling like you're making the improvements to be ready at whatever category you're going to choose and it's smart to take it slow because you are young so it's like there's no need to rush it and try and you know you know, do anything extreme to make that happen sooner. But yeah. um, I think uh, I think that's the best choice to make, you know. But mm-hmm. what I was going to ask you was, uh, like, in the 212s and the classic physique division now at the pro level, who would you say are your favorite guys in the 212 and then your favorite guys in the classic? Well, um, in 212, I think it's because it's uh, very fresh, but uh, Keon won won the show uh, like uh, last weekend. The Chicago Pro, yeah. Yeah, he looks extremely good. Uh, I think it's the shape. I really like it, Mm -hmm. even though there's some guys that may be more conditioned, but uh, he has a crazy shape. Um, 
So I, I would say Keon. I like also uh, Derek uh, Lunsford. Yeah. But uh, same thing. He's never really conditioned, so I don't think uh, he, he'll be doing more than he already did at the Olympia. And for the classic guys, well, I won't say Chris because that's not very original. <laughs> but uh, I really like um, Terence Ruffin, especially oh, yeah. for the posing and the just. Uh, I feel like he he's like a mini Chris, you know, with the shape. Uh, they, they, I think they are very similar. And uh, yeah, I really like the. I think it's the posing that I really like because I, I really enjoy posing too. And when I see someone doing it well, uh, it really you know uh, hit me. So I really like this guy. Yeah. So you really okay. like. The black guys, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're more of a, like, from what I gather, you like the shape more than the conditioning is like your, your selection. Like you're, you're more impressed by a guy with really good structure and shape and presentation than just conditioning. No, I feel like um, both are really impressive, but um, I, I, in, You know, when you ask me uh, who I like more, I was thinking about who the physique I would like more to have, you know? Okay. Like that which one I, I'd rather have more than who's more conditioned. Uh, that's more, I mean, that's that's good to win shows, but to my eye, uh, I also like the shape, etc. So yeah, black guys too, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's on purpose. Yeah. Yes, I really like uh, the kind of shape like this. Uh, really, I restarted the bodybuilding, looking at uh, old school guys, and I think uh, I still uh, I, it's still in my head. So when I look at bodybuilding in uh, in uh, modern times, uh, I always look for uh, a good shape. That, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Keon uh, Keon has a crazy shape, and that's that's why he's able to you know not be quite as conditioned and still win shows, which is crazy. Um, cause if he does nail it, he could smoke a lot of people at the Olympia level, which is going to be interesting to see what happens there this year. Um, and same with Terrence, but like Ter Terrence definitely does come in really good condition. Um, yeah. especially, yeah, last year at the Olympia, he looked really, really good. Um, and you know, I've, I've been fortunate. I did a couple podcasts with Terrence, uh, last year and well, actually this year too, I think. Um, and he's a really good guy, It's like really cool, really easygoing and, You can tell he knows a lot and he has a lot of passion for what he's doing and especially the posing. Uh, I was trying to get him to actually help me with my posing. He didn't have, he doesn't have time, but I wanted to get him to help me with the routine just because I know he's, you know, one of the best when it comes to putting routines together and how to present your physique. So, you know, I was hoping I could, but I, I don't think it's going to happen this year. So maybe in the, maybe in the future, you know? Yeah. I think it's a, it's a really good choice uh, because uh, uh, he, since Toronto, when he did uh, his posing that everybody saw, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think he really marked uh, bodybuilding history, you know, uh, with this kind of posing that was crazy. And uh, since then, he's, he's done other posing, but uh, I don't really find that they match, you know, how good uh, his Toronto's posing was. So, yeah, that's a crazy good pose. Yeah. And plus the physique and the conditioning are here too. So I really, really like it. Yeah. We should, uh, yeah, we should talk about actually the Chicago Pro from last weekend because uh, that was a that was a crazy show altogether. Like not just the two twelves, but every division was pretty pretty interesting to watch, especially the open bodybuilding, um, where we saw, you know, one of the, I guess, OG competitors who's been you know around for a while, winning a lot of shows and dominating, uh, come in fifth place. So, you know, I was I was kind of surprised like before. When I, you know, I heard Raleigh Winkler's doing the show and then until I actually saw the pictures and saw what happened, but like going in, I would have had him, you know, top, top two, top three, no matter what. And then to see him get fifth and look, look off the way he did, I was pretty surprised, but I was really impressed by, uh, Brett Wilkins because, uh, he looked insane and he grew like. I don't even know, probably like 20, at least 20, 30 pounds of muscle in the past two years. Cause yeah. he did the Toronto pro the year that I won my pro card. And then I did the pro show that weekend as well. And I remember him doing two twelves that year and the amount of size he put on since then and still kept the shape really nice is crazy. Cause like, you know, most guys that put on that much size in a couple of years, usually you see like their, 
you know, their midsection gets a little out of, out of whack or like something, it doesn't look quite the same, quite as polished, but he's managed to keep his physique really polished and it looked really impressive uh, in my opinion. Like compared to all the other guys, he was the one that stood out the most to me just because the amount of improvements he made since the last time he was on stage, which is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, I think uh, he's with um, uh, Matt Jensen, no? Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed this, this coach. He's really doing... Uh, he has also... Um, that's a black guy, uh, Charles. I don't know his uh, last name. Charles Garfield? Yeah. Yeah. And he really made a lot of progress uh, since he's uh, with Matt Jensen too. Yeah, but Brett, uh, I, I started following him uh, like a few weeks ago, so I don't really know about his uh, transformation. So you, you just uh, learned me about it. Um, and yeah, he, he was really uh, tied up with uh, Hunter. I really, was really close. I think it's the back poses where Hunter was more complete rather than Brett that really uh, put it in second place. But uh, yeah, it was it was a good showing. At, uh, and really, um, I was uh, was also quite disappointed. But uh, the conditioning wasn't here, um, so I don't know if it's age or if it's a uh, prep that that was maybe too quick. Uh, I don't really know, but uh, yeah, that was a great show for sure. Yeah. In Brett, in Brett's case, um, I really love Matt Jensen's work, especially with his uh, younger athletes like Brett, like uh, Nick, and so on, and especially the work he does with uh, Sean Clarida. But in Brett's case, I wouldn't say that it's just a matter of the coach, because I think the um, the The, the thing that I think that is making Brett a good bodybuilder is the case that he's working out with a really good training partner. He's working out every time with Martin. Is his name Fitzwater? Yeah. And they are pushing each other every session. So it's every time a brutality in their workout. And therefore, I think that's the, the biggest thing that has... Um, caused his transformation because they are I think they're training together two years or maybe only one year but he made this big uh, change while he was working out with a good training partner and Martin um, also no yeah, yeah. He changed a lot yeah. while they are training together so I think it's a combination of having Matt as your coach and a good training partner in a good training facility after watching all those videos in, in their prep, they're really, really, there's really good equipment, really good training sessions, bleeding from the nose while doing leg press. I think that says enough. Yeah, you can tell like Brett has a good, uh, he has a good surrounding in general. Like he has a good training partner. He's got a great girlfriend who's also very into it and obviously very yeah, supportive right. of what he's doing. And I think it's just like everything around him is very good. And then obviously he has the mindset himself to, you know, be able to do these things and put the work in himself. But like you're saying about the training partner, like I've noticed, because I've been training with uh, the training partner, my train, whose name is Josh. Uh, we've been working together uh, the past like three months or so, four months maybe. And I've noticed a huge difference in my training and like what, what I've been able to do in the gym the past three, four months from having a good training partner. You know, I never used to like having a training partner. I'd always prefer to train by myself because I thought I could focus better, etc. But when you do find someone that's, you know, looking to get the same type of results, they have the same type of focus, same type of drive, they want to push hard in the gym, and they're there to do work, it just, it makes a huge difference uh, to have someone like that with you in the gym, you know, and it's like, if you can find that, then like, it's the sky's the limit with how much you can progress with your training. And we all know, like, you know, training is, is important, you know, it's being able to have a high level of training performance and, you know, utilize those training sessions to progress over anything else is one of the most important things, you know, outside of nutrition. So, um, yeah, I think that definitely makes a big difference for Brett having Martin and likewise for, for Martin and, you know, Brett versus vice versa, because Martin's also made some pretty crazy improvements since he won his pro card last year. Uh, cause I think he's only, he's like 24, maybe 25 around there. Yeah, he's pretty young too. Yeah. yeah. So he, he was pretty young winning his two, but uh, yeah, they're both friggin' growing like crazy over there in Denver. I guess it's something about the altitude and the, <laughs> you know, 
So Mario, not... you you training alone or you have a training partner? Uh, me? Yeah. Yeah, I've been mostly training alone, but um, sometimes I, I have a good friend that I coach. And when we see each other, because in I'm in Paris and he's in southern France, so okay. we don't see each other a lot. But when, when we do, uh, we train together and it, we both, we really click. There's really a good uh, energy together. And that's pretty rare, just like you said, uh, Joe. Um, so I really understand, but I don't have it every day. So I mostly train alone. It's good to focus, just like you said. But uh, sometimes, you know, uh, not every day you are at 100%, 100%. So having someone to, you know, even bring challenges, like uh, lift more than me, do one rep more than me, etc. That's really, I think, in the long term, do, the, do a lot of changes here also. It really yeah. depends. Yeah, it gives you more of like a competitive atmosphere too when you're going back and forth with someone like that. And, you know, they could be close to your level of strength or maybe even stronger than you, you know, because... I've trained with uh, Ian Ballier before and he's very strong and especially yeah. on presses, man, like trying to keep up with him on like, you know, bench press and things like that is impossible for me because he's so strong, but it's a good push for me. And, you know, like training with someone like that, that's a little bit better than you. It just, it makes you level up too, because you got to try and keep up with someone like that. And it's uh, it's a really good way to progress, you know? And like, like you said, like, uh, you know, you do train alone a lot, but like, when you do have those workouts with someone else and it's someone that you click with, it goes really well. And I'm sure like if you guys lived closer together, I'm sure you guys would train more frequently, but uh, you know, you just link up when you can for now. I just have to look uh, how far Paris is away from me. So maybe we can connect. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, you know, or, no, really, really. I, I, but I uh, think it's better to be uh, the smallest guy in the gym than the biggest you know when you're smallest i think you're more motivated to you know catch up with everyone so i think yeah also having people stronger than you it's better yeah yeah it's good training with someone that's better than you because then it, it's gonna push you right like whether that's strength or whether they're a more advanced athlete or bodybuilder whatever the case is it's always good to train with someone that's a little bit above you a little bit more experienced and You know, it's going to push you to a new level. So, like, if you have access to that, it's something you want to utilize. And especially doing a prep together should be easier for you, yeah. for your head. Yeah. Having somebody there, you can That's push. True. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I've done a prep, an uh, entire prep, like two years ago with a training partner every day. And it really where, you know, I was really tired all, all day. But when it comes to training, you know, I was more awake because I had someone who pushes me, driving me through the workouts, through the through the different exercises. I was when you're alone, you're a bit more, you know, you're less awake. You know, you're not talking to someone. You're not uh, so that's very different. And I think it's helped a lot. Yeah, But even with the uh, booking. Yeah. Best case scenario. That's uh, so. How far are you from uh, Paris, Jay? Yeah? Five and a half hours. Is that, is that flying or driving? Uh, driving. Driving? That's not bad. Yeah. Five and a half hours driving every day? That would be 10. No, no, no. But I just mean like if you did like a like a, a, a trip or something, that's not bad because yeah, that's like, uh, yeah. But yeah, every day that's crazy. But I just mean like if you went out there for like a weekend or something, like it's not uh, too bad. Where are you in uh, Germany? Uh, in, in near of uh, Stuttgart. Ah, Stuttgart. Okay. In the south, and yeah, I already thought about doing my next prep next year. Um, we can talk about one day, but I thought about doing my prep uh, next year, not in Germany, and with somebody who who may compete too, just to push together and to focus more onto prep. And I thought about going to Spain or France or some, or maybe Canada. Who knows? Uh, just to do the prep in another country with somebody who does bodybuilding too and so we can push together in yeah, the gym and outside the gym putting out content things like that because i think people like when you don't do things alone when you push together and i think the success could be higher when uh, you have a good training partner every day yeah yeah and a good gym too and a routine yeah right 
That'd be a cool, that's a cool concept, you know? If you want to come to Canada, let me know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is a cool concept, man, to have to train and prep with someone. And then you're kind of doing those things together and you have a very good uh, system going and consistency day to day. And just like, it's very hard to fall off track when you're in like, when you're tight knit like that. You know what I mean? You train together, you live yeah. together, whatever. You know, it's very hard to fall off track when you have someone around like that all the time. So I think that's a cool idea. I think that'd be really good too for social media too, because you'd be basically like a, a day in the life all the time with all what you're posting. I, I, I don't know if you guys know uh, Francisco Barrios. He's also an athlete of Patrick. And yeah. he went for his, um, he's competing at the NPC Europa in Alicante in, I think, two weeks. And he, do, he did his whole prep in Flex Lewis Dragon Lair. And he went there in Las Vegas for, I think, almost no, nine weeks. And he's doing his whole prep there with his training partners. And he trained with Dominic Cardone. He put out videos with him and Victor Capial and Rafael Brandao and Flex Lewis and so on. And I thought about doing the same, going to a place outside from here so you don't have the same environment and you have somebody to push together and do the prep together, putting out content because people love to see, really love to see. Did he do that because of like, uh, because of like his own country having restrictions or did he do that because like he wanted to have like a training partner and so No, he's, he's a big, he's a really big Flex Lewis fan. And I think they gr grew together now because they really uh, do a lot of stuff together. Uh, Flex okay. Lewis is nearly in every video of Francisco and they're talking much and you can watch sometimes on Flex Lewis story. He's also there training with Francisco, legs, things like that. And I think that he decided to go there even if it costs a lot because you have to live in Las Vegas and train with Flex Lewis in his gym. It's a lot of money. And I think he decided to do just to have the perfect environment, the perfect bodybuilding environment to go to that show in, um, in Spain and get his pro card. And I thought about doing the same because you're doing all the year, everything on 100%. So the prep should be more than 100. And doing things like that, going into, into a really perfect bodybuilding environment training with people who live this shit no it's uh, something different and then you can you can success is all almost uh inevitable all yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. The environment is uh, very important yeah therefore we should meet we should meet all three in canada and do some good preps together and then we will be big as hell Hopefully. I'm trying to, to catch up with uh, Jan Valier. Oh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I've not, I haven't been to the Dragon Lair gym, though. Like, I've seen pictures and videos from there. It looks really nice. Uh, so I'm, I bet that guy's prep has been going really well because, like, the, the atmosphere and the equipment there is insane because you have a lot of very, you know, top-level guys training there. You see guys like Jay Cutler and Sean Roden and, you know, et cetera, like just showing up there to train all the time. So having that kind of atmosphere makes a huge difference too, you know, because I noticed that just for myself, like, you know, seeing guys like Ian Valier, Chris Bumstead, and, you know, some of these other like good athletes, you know, in my local area to at the gym all the time. And it's, you know, it's pretty motivating for yourself to like see that and have that kind of atmosphere when you're in the gym and training with pe training around people like that. Um, definitely makes a big difference when you're prepping, I think. Yeah. But Amari, I, I have a question um, because we we talked the last episodes of um, um, on topics like how is bodybuilding in different countries and especially how um, misunderstood is bodybuilding in Germany and France is, yeah, is our neighbor country. So just tell about how is bodybuilding in in France and what is like training in your gym? Do you have the perfect environment there or would you like to live in another place with better bodybuilding environment? Um, well, I think uh, in France, it's kind of the same situation as in Germany. Um, oh shit. Bodybuilding is, um, 
not really understood. For for instance, uh, when we do a bodybuilding show in France, it's not seen. I mean, on paper, it's not a sport event. It's mm -hmm. a cosmetic and uh, you know event uh, like uh, Miss France or something. You know. Okay, crazy. So it's not considered as a sport competition. So that says a lot. And um, in France, uh, I think even outside bodybuilding, uh, people looking at it like uh, normal people, um, most people are comprehensive, but they won't really, th I mean, inside the bodybuilding, uh, inside French bodybuilding, you know, bodybuilders among themselves, uh, there's a bad, um, I feel, vibe. Um, there's a lot of um, jealousy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people, you know, envying you. You know, since I got my pro card, um, there's a lot of people that uh, were encouraging me, like saying, that's good, etc., good luck, that don't even talk to me anymore. And uh, I know why. That's because I, I did better than them. So, um, but, you know, that... It's getting better because now um, me and some friends, we are being, uh, you know, the younger generation and we we try to make it a bit better, you know, being uh, just like in uh, England, you know, there's a um, train by GP. Yeah. And all of the guys are on the website, they're talking together, then sharing a lot of infos. And I would like really to develop that in France um, to, to make, uh, you know, the, the place better because I really don't like the mood there is in bodybuilding in France. But, um, yeah, if I would do a prep, anything, you know, if I, if I could go to another country to do my prep, I would, I think, because um, here in France, we have mostly um, commercial gyms, like uh, really for everyone. It's not really bodybuilding gyms. I think, I mean, the, there is a few but uh, often they are in the little towns very far from Paris. So, so that we mostly have yeah, commercial gyms where there's no many equipment for bodybuilders, you know, very basic stuff like bench press, uh, some amount strength here and there, mm -hmm. but it's nothing crazy. But still, we are not really, uh, 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 you know, um, we can do our thing you know, quietly, you know, peacefully, but still, you know, uh, people don't really uh, recognize it as a good sport and don't really, I think, respect it sometimes. But uh, so I think it's really quite the same in Germany. Uh, yeah, it seems so. It really sounds like the same, exactly the same situation like here. Yeah. I don't know if you listened to the last podcast, the episode that came out last day, I told it's almost the same as in France now. You don't have really those bodybuilding gyms with the really good equipment. And it's not really, it's not like football, like soccer. You know, you spend a lot of, people spend a lot of money uh, going to the, to the uh, games and watching uh, soccer, but no one really accepts bodybuilding as a sport. And I thought maybe in France is, is another thing, but it seems to be the same. Maybe we have to leave Europe forever. <laughs> maybe that's the solution, but uh, no, I think we can, uh, you know, with, with the older people, you know, stopping and getting away from the sport, I think now the younger guys, we can, you know, uh, make it better. Yeah. I mean, that's what I have. Make bodybuilding yeah. great again. Yeah, that's it. Exactly it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting uh, talking about this topic itself because I just, uh, I don't know if you guys follow uh, Shanique Grant. But, uh, she was, uh, you know, former Miss Physique Olympia because uh, she posted a, a video just the other day and she was saying how, in her opinion, uh, that bodybuilding isn't a sport, it's just a hobby. So this is what she was saying. She was saying that she thinks bodybuilding is just a hobby, not a sport. Now, I want to hear both of your guys' opinions on this. So, like, I want to hear why you think it's a sport or why you think it's a hobby. Like, in which one you think it is. So you can go first, Amari. 
Okay. Um, well, to me, um, it's a sport, but it's, it's really, I mean, it's not like the other sport, of course, because when you do, just like you said, for soccer, for example, you do, do your training, then you come back home and it's done. And for bodybuilding, uh, you, you do the nutrition, you have to get the sleep, you have to get the supplements, you have to go to the training, you have to, you have to be aware, you have to drink the water. I mean, it's a whole thing. So that could be not uh, seen as a sport, but if not seen as a sport, it would be maybe more than a sport. Uh, but a hobby, I mean, to me, a, a hobby is something not hard and not... Uh, uh, done like uh, all the time, you know. So I think it's more sport, especially with the the fact that we are training and training uh, is, is just doing sport. So I don't really think I don't really understand what why we should uh, she would say that, uh, especially as a former Olympian champion. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe for her it's easy. I don't know. I don't think. But uh, for me, if you're training hard, you you are doing a sport. What do you think, Jay? Never ask me questions like that because now shit is getting uh, really difficult to explain. So, in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion, um, if you're doing a hobby, then it's not called bodybuilding. You can say everyone is doing bodybuilding because everyone is building his body, but I think when you're doing this as a hobby, so you do it not frequently, just a few times in a week or when you have time for that or when you meet friends to do it together, then I think it's called fitness. You go to the gym or you go outside and you do fitness. Doing bodybuilding is a mix of many things. So bodybuilding is a sport, doing it in the gym. So you have to train, you have to move weights. It's just like playing soccer with the ball you just playing with the weights just like that so i think when you're in the gym this is called the sport bodybuilding outside of the gym you are living the bodybuilding lifestyle so the whole day is um, with eating with sleeping with drinking with stretching with all these things is the lifestyle bodybuilding in the gym it's a sport and now we have to do the difference between the sport in the gym and the competition itself, because on the competition or at the competition, we don't do sport activity. We just pose. So this should be called something like, uh, not, not like in France, beauty and uh, cosmetic things. It's just like um, cultural, um, something like you're going to a museum to watch paintings. And it's something like that. So more cultural and therefore... People in Spain, they call bodybuilding, not bodybuilding, they call it culturismo, so cult culturism. In France too, yeah. And I think that the competition itself is something more um, beautiful to watch. So something like a movie, like in the theater. And the thing outside of the competition is the real sport and lifestyle. So I think doing a hobby, for with a hobby, you don't go to competitions you don't um, schedule your whole day around this hobby so it should be something more than a hobby and i think the reason because it comes from somebody like shanique and that's thing then that's i think is the reason why she retired because she doesn't have this passion and this love for bodybuilding anymore as she had before when she competed. Therefore, she is a former Olympia winner, but she retired out of nowhere with reasons, I think, Fuad discussed on the podcast, um, which are not so clear. So I think if, I, if I'm not into bodybuilding that much anymore, it's easier for me to speak bad about. So talking about bodybuilding is not a sport, it's just a hobby, than for somebody like us being in the sport and uh, trying to make or having a career in it. That's my opinion. So you saw it's really difficult explained and a lot. No, I, I think you, I think you both, that. I think you both did a great job explaining it. And I think I agree with both of you. And like the one thing that you said there um, that I always have thought is uh, something that factors it into being more of a sport than a hobby is, you know, someone who actually competes in bodybuilding shows you know, whether it be at 
just the amateur level or professional level. I think being competitive is what makes the sport aspect of it, you know, like going and competing in general is what makes it a sport to me. Um, regardless, you know, obviously the training and the nutrition and consistency day to day and dedicating your day to structuring it around that. But, you know, the actual competing aspect, I think, is what makes it a sport because you have set goals in mind of what you're trying to accomplish. And, you know, whether that's a certain placing or winning a certain show or getting your pro card, whatever the goal is, you know, it's like you have those set milestones that you're trying to achieve. And that's like an athlete, you know, it's like could be a hockey player. He wants to, you know, win the Stanley Cup or, you know, a guy that's a sprinter going to the Olympics, like he wants to get a gold medal, like whatever the case might be. It's like you're working towards those milestones and you're doing the day to day requirements to make that happen. When I think of it more as a hobby for bodybuilding and like I wouldn't even call it bodybuilding is like like you said, it's like people, it's like the general fitness goals or guys that like, you know, they go to the gym and they work out and they, you know, eat OK, but they're not strict and regimented with what they're doing you know they're just doing it to try and yeah like they want to look good for the summer they want to get a bit bigger whatever the case might be but they're not really into it to the point of dedicating their you know life to or the decade of their life or whatever long they do it uh to being a bodybuilder and being a competitive bodybuilder so i would say a competitive bodybuilder being a competitive bodybuilder especially you know as a elite level amateur or professional is definitely a sport. I would say if you're just a, you know, bodybuilding enthusiast and you don't really compete and you don't really dedicate, you know, as much time to it, then I would say that leans a little bit more towards a hobby. But in my opinion, competitive bodybuilding is a sport. Um, And I think with Shanique, there's a few things that I thought of uh, with her posting that it's one, like she did rise to the top really fast. So I feel like she didn't really, not to say that she didn't work hard, but it's like she didn't have to put in the years that a lot of other people usually have to put in to get to that level and be one of the best in the sport, you know? So I feel like her opinion is a little bit skewed because she kind of, she got out of it early and she's like, you know, there's more to life than this now. So she's kind of playing on that line of things and that's fine if that's what she wants to feel. But I just, I think we all disagree with her and that's that's the kind of yeah. kind of the answer I was looking for is to see you know, the different reasons why bodybuilding is a sport versus why it's not just a hobby, especially obviously competitively, you know, people, people can just write down in the comments what they think about. So we know about more than our own opinions. And I think most people agree that bodybuilding is just a sport, not, not only a hobby. Because I I don't think we should even ask the question. Sorry. What was, I I don't think we, we, we should even, uh, consider the question i think to me it's it's, uh, it's a sport so of course so, yeah. yeah but but you yeah. have to you have to make many uh, opinions and especially the comments help the algorithm for the video don't forget that it's interesting <laughs> well, like, i agree i agree with you omari like I, i i think the same way i do think it's a sport and i i feel like we have enough valid reasons why it's a sport but it's always interesting to see what people think that are yeah not necessarily into it. So it's like someone who's just, you know, an average gym goer and getting their opinion on why they think it is or isn't a sport is kind of cool. Like whether they agree or disagree with you, doesn't really matter. It's just kind of interesting to see the opinions. Like, cause like, it's not like, you know, if someone said bodybuilding is not a sport, it's not going to change my opinion, but it's interesting to see if they have some sort of justification as to why they say that, as opposed to just them being like, Oh, it's not a sport. It's not on ESPN. So it's not a sport, you know, like, because that's how some people yeah, right. justify it. It's like, oh, it's not on mainstream television when they do the Olympia. So it's not a sport. But, you know, if uh, the hockey game or the UFC match, yeah. the UFC fights or whatever, then those count. But, you know, <laughs> I feel like some people just the reason off of mainstream media. Comments, comments. That's the reason why we don't get that much money because it's not on television. Yeah, it's not as widespread on the, the mainstream media. So that's the unfortunate. But I think uh, I remember last year there they were saying that they might have the Olympia on like ESPN or something uh, in the near future, like this, like this year. So like we'll see if they have it on more of a mainstream network when they have it playing this year. Because I th- so Dwayne Johnson was about to do a bodybuilding show too. Yeah, the uh, like, it was scheduled uh, last year. It was going to be in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. 
And yeah. maybe it could be uh, the way for bodybuilding to get on television, you know, maybe more uh, uh, an accessible show uh, with maybe uh, other other sport uh, being being showcased. I don't know, but I think it, it could be the way, yeah, more than more than uh, Mr. Olympia or something like that. Yeah, well, especially with someone like you know Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, like mm. he's very well known you know, yeah. as a celebrity and for what all he's done. So if he's promoting bodybuilding shows and fitness expos and stuff like that, then I guarantee you it would make the sport blow up even more in a positive way because yeah. more people are going to see it and more people are going to be, you know, interested in it because, you know, someone like that is at the front of it and they're promoting it, you know, for all of the other ones. But I remember seeing that show posted last year. I forget the name of the ex, like he was having like a whole fitness expo with a bunch of different events going on but it got canceled last year. I don't think it's happening to my knowledge. I don't think it's happening this year, but hopefully by next year that does happen because that'll be huge uh, for, for the whole sport in general. Yeah. So, so you're trying to make bodybuilding in France great again yeah. and Wayne Johnson for the whole world. And I'm escaping from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the plan. <laughs> I feel like for most, I feel like the only country that I can, well, I think uh, there's certain countries that I think respect bodybuilding more. Like I feel like countries like Egypt and some of the Middle Eastern countries have more respect for bodybuilding. And then even in the, even in the States, they have more respect for bodybuilding. Because anytime I've traveled to the States for shows, you're like walking around the grocery store or something and people are looking at you like, holy shit. Like they, they'll literally come right up to you and be like, man, you look crazy. Like they'll just walk right up to you and say that versus like when I'm in, you know, Canada and I'm in the store like that, people just mutter stuff under their breath and like try and talk, yeah, you know, try was. and talk shit, you know, they'll be like, Oh, he takes drugs. He does this, blah, 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 blah. blah. And they're like, you know what I mean? Like, instead of just being like res respecting someone else's work ethic, they automatically try and demean what you're doing. And uh, so I feel like, yeah, there's some countries where it's like, you'd probably be like a God there. And then other countries where it's like, you know, they're looked upon as like, oh, they're just like doing drugs and doing stupid shit. They don't know what they're yeah. doing, you know? A lot of respect. I think, I think you can agree that the Spain and Portugal are really, really yeah. good for bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. Those those are the only know, countries especially Spain, I know. because I was, uh, yeah, especially Spain, when, when I won uh, like everything, uh, people were, you know, uh, asking me a lot, uh, asking for pictures and, and You know, I was, everyone was uh, congratulating me. And in France, I don't think I would, it would have been the same, you know. It's more just uh, Portugal too. Uh, such a, you know, anything, just the attitude, the global attitude, you know. Uh, people cheering me up when I was on stage, when I was backstage, you know, even the other competitors, you know, was, were very friendly. In France, uh, you know, they smile in front of you. And when you have your back turned, you know, <laughs> everything they say, that, that's not the same thing. So, yeah, I, I was really, um, really a uh, good surprise when I was in Spain, you know, compared to a lot of other countries. But, uh, yeah, even when uh, Big Remy uh, won the Olympia, when he came back to uh, Egypt, I think, uh, at the airport, like uh, crazy, thousands man. of people, you know, just for was... him. Yeah, I think he was like welcomed by the president and everything of the country. Yeah. Like he had like a royal welcome back to his home country after winning the Olympia. And I've never seen that happen for any American that's won it or, you know, it's yeah. crazy. Like uh, how some of the countries respect it versus other countries don't even like acknowledge it, you know? Yeah. yeah. But Joe, you mentioned... When I came to France, oh, sorry. Or... Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Just go on. Yeah, yeah, no, but... It's uh, when I came back to France, uh, I just uh, came back to my gym and nobody knows what happened. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. Yeah. You know, nobody knows what happened except uh, the, the girl at the, um, who walks at the gym because he knows me. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, you know, I was, I, uh, nobody knows. You know, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Yes, but I don't know how it is in Canada, but... Uh, Joe, you, meant, you mentioned a good thing because my mom said the same. Now that she's more into bodybuilding because of me, she knows what we are doing, what we are sacrificing, what, that we are suffering, that we destroy our whole body and life for that goal. And she knows what we put in so she can admire, so she can say, 
that's a good thing. Um, you you earn respect. You have to earn respect because of that. But most of the people, uh, the people who you see in doing groceries or when you walk um, at the street on the street and they look at you and they they have this disgusting um, look for you. No, those people don't really know what we are doing. So they don't even know if we are putting work in. So they say things like, oh, he's abusing steroids. Oh, he's only that big because of the PEDs and things like that. But they don't even know that we have to dedicate, that we have to train hard each all day and recover and things like that. People don't know what we are really doing, except the people who really are into bodybuilding or who are interested in and inform their self and they look what is bodybuilding what are bodybuilder and uh, what what are doing bodybuilders in general and then when they know they can admire but most of the time they don't even know what we are doing no yeah. and it's uh sorry uh it's it's very true like uh and like omari was saying like in canada like uh in reference to canada like i would say like where i am now and where i train now more of the people like that go there They know who I am. They know I'm a pro, blah, 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 blah. So they, a lot of them follow me on social media. So I know if I went away, if I went to compete and came back now, um, they would, they would recognize that and be like, Oh, congrats, man, you look great or whatever. Like just the people at my gym that know me. Um, but like in a general sense, like most people would have no idea, but there is, you know, there's a few individuals who would definitely recognize it and respect it and, you know, congratulate you on that as well. Um, And then to go on with uh, with what you're saying there, Jay, um, I think the funny thing is is that every single sport out there has some form of PEDs involved. You know what I mean? Especially at a professional level, every single sport has something involved, whatever minor amount, different, it depends on it is. So I find it amusing when people say this about bodybuilding because obviously it's so cosmetic, it's so obvious yeah. in that sense. But like, a lot of other sports are using performance enhancing drugs and they just, it's like, they don't want to acknowledge it. You know, it's like, they don't want to admit it that all these other sports that they like, whether it's, you know, basketball, hockey, football, whatever it could be. They're like, they love these sports and think these guys are all just, you know, freaks of nature and natty. <laughs> But like in reality, there's other stuff involved. Same with the Olympics. And you know what I mean? It's just like, It just, it boggles my mind when people like freak out over like, oh, so-and-so failed a drug test. And it's like, yeah, but I guarantee you all these people are doing things. They're just doing it in a, such a way so that they don't get detected, you know? And like, it just, that's, that's the part that makes, that's the part I always find amusing is like, you know, they compare bodybuilding, like it's, you know, so terrible and people are abusing this and that. And it's like, you know, to a degree, sure. You could say certain people do whatever, but There's other sports doing very similar things and no one really says anything about it because, you know, it's kind of hidden more so, you know? I don't think people realize because when you go like on Instagram and you have very big guys that tell I'm natural and people believe it, yeah. I think if people can believe that a 225 lean guy is natural, <laughs> they can't believe that again doesn't appear muscular on the Olympics is natural. You know, I think they don't they don't even think about it because like like you say, you don't see it as much as a bodybuilder. But uh, yeah, I think uh, even though we, we often um, between sport uh, use the same things. So it's just uh, the food, the training that different, etc. So yeah, I don't think I think people just don't even think about it. Yeah. People are telling me that Cristiano Ronaldo is natty. They really believe that. And they are buying his shirts and they spend a lot of money for him. And I say it's great, but that doesn't mean only because he pretends to be natty. Obviously, he's not because no one can be like that. It doesn't mean that we are shit because we are doing the same stuff as him. A bit more and we obviously we use them but that doesn't mean that Cristiano Ronaldo is natty and that yeah. he's a better human than we are you know yeah. here's I got I got an, I got a good question for you guys uh, before we start to wrap things up so would you rather see the Olympics 
continue to be fully drug tested as it is? Or would you rather see the Olympics be open and people could just do what they want and we get to see what the maximum potential is of human, human performance in every division? Amari, start, please. Me first, okay. Well, that's a question uh, I never asked myself. But um, in, in one hand, it would be, of course, very impressive to see, you know, if we let people zero testing, you know, that could take more or more frequently. I don't know. I don't really know how they pass, you know, tests. But, uh, and I don't even know if, we, if, we, if it would make any difference for, for, for you know, just uh, taking or not, test or not. I don't know. I don't know what you, what, how different it would be. But um, I don't know, you know, from a health perspective, uh, everyone is taking, as long as there is competition in the sports, everyone is taking something. And I don't know if they can go, um, you know, like, if they can trick the test, uh, I don't know if it would change anything. You know, maybe they, they would have the same results. Maybe, uh, I don't know how it works. Um, so, yeah, um, that, that's a difficult question, you know, because maybe uh, if there's no drug testing, uh, maybe it will be the same. It'd be interesting. Uh, what do you think? I don't really know. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? So you're talking about the Olympics or the Olympia? The Olympics. The Olympics. Yeah. So, so like, basically, would you rather see the Olympics continue to be drug tested or would you rather see it be open and they could basically do whatever they want in a sense and there's no drug testing? In my opinion, it should be wide open. And not because I, I spit on health reasons or something like health-wise, it should be drug tested, of course. So nobody can really um, take stuff and ruin their their health. But at the end of the day of the day, um, I will I want to see the maximum out of everybody. And at the end, it's always the smartest win. So not only taking um, more than the other guy makes you a better athlete. Uh, doesn't take you to the win only because you are taking more than your competitor. It's always how you use um, the things you have, how you, how you use the tools. So you have the same tools as everyone. It's wide open, no drug testing, nothing, but you have to use it as smart as possible. And then it's always the smarter, the better, not the more, the better. And therefore I think it should be wide open and also for people who want to compete at the Olympics and have the dream, I want to compete one day there, they don't have to live uh, with a lie because most of the people already use and they think, oh, they are all natural. Some people at, at the playground here in, in, my, um, in my city, they tell me, I want to be one day like Cristiano Ronaldo. And in my head, I think, yeah, then you have to use drugs. You can't be that talented because he's he's telling you he's natural and people believe that if it would be wide open it would be clear everyone is using something so we don't have to live with a lie and everyone knows and they can decide from the beginning okay i want to be drug free my whole life so i will never compete at the olympics and i have to chase another dream but nowadays people think oh it's all natural and only bodybuilders are using so one day I will be at the Olympics and then they arrive at the point or they reach the point where, where they have to use and then they say, oh no, from here, I don't want to go further. And that's shit. I think it should be open, really open. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Like, I feel like it should be open uh, mainly because it's like a lot of people, like we said, a lot of people are doing things anyways and they're trying to hide it or they're trying to, you know, stop certain things so many weeks out so they don't get detected or whatever the case might be and just from a you know being someone who like likes watching you know top level competitions in general like I think it would just be amazing to see what people could do if they didn't have to worry about those restrictions and on top of that it's like we wouldn't have to deal with these stupid little things that happen where it's like the one girl you know gets banned for smoking a joint and like you know things like that where it's like 
it really like shouldn't be something that's causing these issues. And it's like, you know, what, let's just let these people do what they want, you know, prepare how they want to prepare and just show up and see who's the best. Like that would be amazing. And I would be way more interested in watching it um, if it was like that, as opposed to like what's been going on this year. And it's just like, it just seems so, so much drama involved that it, I, I, I've lost some interest in it for sure because of that. But um, yeah, I honestly think it would be amazing to see if they would do that. Will they ever do that? I don't know. Probably not anytime soon, <laughs> but <laughs> I think it would be, it would be interesting if that did happen, you know? For entertaining but, reasons is, it's, it's better. But also if you are stupid enough that you kill yourself by using drugs, then you won't compete. That's, oh, no, of course. that's fact. If you are stupid enough to kill yourself, yeah, it's yeah. it's like I said, if you're smart, you use the tools you have, like everyone has, and you yeah. use them wisely and you will compete and be better than anyone who just thinks, okay, now it's drug free, uh, drug free testing. Uh, it's no testing at all. And I can take all everything. And they destroy their body and they then they don't compete because they killed their self. Then that's just silly. But if you are smart enough and you use the tools in the right way, you will compete and be the best version of yourself and entertaining the people watching and paying for watching. Yeah. No, it's true. And like, obviously, you know, I'm not trying to encourage any type of drug use or anything. I'm just saying, you know, Strictly from a fan perspective, I think it would be, you know, it'd be it'd be amazing to see it happen. But yeah. you know, it's gonna be something that we could just talk about for now and just see people's opinions on, and yeah. and eventually one day maybe it will. But we'll, we we won't know any anytime soon, anyways. But uh, it's uh, it's an interesting topic because I've talked I've asked a few people about it, and I like a lot of people. I think a lot more people than you think would be open to the idea just as a fan they're just yeah. like they'd want to see like how much faster can this guy run or how much more can this guy lift or whatever the case so more impressive yeah yeah it'd be it'd be it'd be interesting to see it happen and uh yeah so but yeah <laughs> um so that's been uh, it's been just over an hour guys so i think we're gonna start uh, wrapping this up now Uh, Amari, I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to come on here with us and chat about bodybuilding and, you know, talk about uh, you winning your pro card this year and everything that's coming up for you in the future, which is really, really impressive, especially for being only 20 years old, man. That's a crazy bright future ahead for you, man. This um, was your first podcast? What's that? This was your first podcast? Uh, I did one in French after Alicante, okay. but that's my first in English, yeah. That's first English podcast. Very, 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 very nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did good, man. Your English is good. Better yeah, than the half. French accent. Uh, yeah, it's very sick. Yeah. I'm I'm used to the French accent because I live uh, in Canada mm -hmm. and like there's Quebec mm -hmm. and lots of French accents, so yeah. it's totally normal. Yeah, I I know I have an accent just talking in Can like Canadian English, so you know. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on and. Uh, What I was going to ask is if, if there's any, you know, sponsors or social media or anything you want to mention, uh, you could mention that now and I'll, I'll make sure to include like your, your social media, Instagram and such in the comment, in the description of the video. Yeah, just yet. I don't have uh, any sponsors. Okay. So people um, sponsor you. So no, not really. Just, just me, uh, my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So people can see again if you want to follow him. Yeah. Ice BB Pro Cesar Pat. Nice. Can, can you explain this name? Pat? Well, well it's because of your it, um, in name. Fact, uh, Cesar is my the my third name, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. A, it became a nickname, so I kept it. And uh, Pat is just my uh, my family name but shorter. So that's yeah. just we saw here. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. People can follow you there on Instagram. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Perfect. Nice. Um, but yeah, the, thanks. Thanks again, man. Like I appreciate you coming on and we should get you on again uh, in the near future to see how the progress is coming along with your off season. Maybe I will visit you then we can train together. Hopefully. Yeah, it'll be a cool video to do. Oh yeah. Not only a cool video, 
Fuck off training. the video. I just want to train with you. Yeah. It's not only about content and video. We have to train together. But yeah. only when COVID restrictions are gone because I don't want to pay that much for yeah. COVID testing. Yeah, but I have, like I, like I told you, uh, I often go in Germany. Uh, usually I would go like once a year in the summer. Uh, but now, so I, I can't. But uh, if in the near future, I, I'll be passing by, I think. I will wait for you, bro. Yeah, it's cool. Perfect. I'm going to wait to see this video. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Now I'm, now I'm switching to an English content. I'm not doing any more German videos. I'm doing everything in English so you can watch and understand. Yeah. 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 That's good. That makes it easier for me. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off. Hope you guys both have a great day and uh, we'll yeah. chat soon, okay? You yeah. too. Bye-bye. Take care.